LeBron, Avery Bradley was saying you felt the tone change for the team in the second quarter when you picked up Giannis and, and just wondering what your mindset was and how you thought they could push forward. Well, I mean, uh, uh, my sidekick right here, he uh, picked up a couple of early fouls and, you know, it was my, uh, my opportunity to just take the challenge and, um, you know, I didn't want him to get another one, um, even though he ended up getting another one anyways. Uh, <laughs> but I'm uh, just taking the challenge, man, and um, taking the responsibility. Defensive end, and uh, you know that's what it all came down to. We know you have the point guard role on the team now. You're leading the league in assists, but the team is now 20 and 0 when you score at least 30. Is there anything about just being aggressive and how you've seen that filter out in different games? No, I just uh, you know it's all just predicated on how the defenses guard me or what I see throughout the course of the game. I don't never predetermine what I'm gonna do. Um, take the gaps when they're there. Um, you know, if I get a double team, I you know try to find the right man and I turn the ball over and. Uh, Kind of read and react. Is there anything that you guys take away from this, just given how well Milwaukee's played throughout the season, that anything that you might learn that you didn't know already at this point of the season? No, we learn uh, from every game that we've played this year, both wins and losses. You got to have a growth mindset and you got to be able to uh, grow in losses and be able to grow in wins as well and see things that you could have done better, things that you did well, you can apply to the next game and things of that nature. So there's always a growth mindset for our growth. Uh, building on the uh, idea of you guarding Giannis tonight, Paul did an interview a couple weeks ago with a friend of yours, and he said that guys don't guard the other guy in the league today. Um, how much truth is there to that? Obviously, tonight, in tonight's circumstances, that that's not true. And if, if it is true, why don't we see it more often? I don't know. I mean, for me, I just you know, I just take the challenge. I mean, you know, like I said, AD, I mean, Giannis starts at the four, you know, and uh, a lot of times in our league, you get cross-matched, meaning like if I'm – if Wes Matthews is going in a defensive end and we miss a shot, you know, I have to run back to a guy that's closest to me. You know, you get cross-matched if he's trying to run across the floor and trying to take a matchup. But, um, you know, what allowed me to kind of switch the matchup tonight was that, like I said, my, my all-star um, picked up two early fouls and I couldn't afford him to get another foul because Giannis was going, he went downhill a couple of times and got AD, you know, out of position. But um, just taking the challenge and, and understanding that if, um, you know, if I take the challenge and the rest of us will take the challenge as well. Um, you know, we all did that. It wasn't just me. How much preparation did you do going in for the potential of guarding Giannis? Same prep I do every game. I watch film on the opposing team. Uh, I watched their last two games on the way in here. It took me about an hour and 15 to get here on the game day. So it allowed me to kind of lock in on what they do best. Um, um, but there's not, not any more preparation I do for any ball club or any individual. Um, I'm just always trying to have myself in a position where if the matchup you know, occurs, then I'm always ready for it because I'm prepared. Hey, LeBron, you're talking about the idea of taking on the challenge of defending Giannis, but when he was going up against you defensively, how are you approaching him in this circumstance? Say that again. What, when Giannis was defending you on different plays, how are you approaching that matchup on the offensive end? Um, the same way I approach any matchup. Don't predetermine what I'm going to do offensively. Uh, if I have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, I try to, you know, exploit that, be aggressive. If a double come, then I know I got a four on three on the backside. Try not to turn the ball over and get a good shot. Milwaukee's, Milwaukee's been leading the league in paint points against this season. Uh, I think around 38, and you were, I want to say, nine for nine in the paint. Was there anything you noticed about their coverages where you were able to get to the basket so often and finish? Um, well, it starts with our bigs. Our bigs did a great job of screening. You know, trying to leave, you know, pressure on the ball for me and my defender. And then um, once I just kind of see a crack um, in the defense, I just try to read and react, you know, um, you know, and get into the lane. If I had a, you know, a couple of times I got into the lane, they brought two to the ball. I was able to find AD on the lob. I was able to find JaVale on the dump off. He was able to, you know, make the layup. And then a couple of times I was able to find a lane for myself, you know, and just being aggressive. LeBron, this is just two games, but how big is this weekend for you guys? Milwaukee tonight. Clippers on Sunday, just to kind of see where you guys are at. Um, I don't think we need a weekend to see where we are. We know who we are, but it's great competition. And uh, to, to have an opportunity to compete at a high level versus uh, you know some of the great teams that we have in our league, that's fun and that's exciting. But um, we know who we are. We know what we're capable of. Um, but we also can um, you know be extremely excited about playing in, in, in great atmospheres. and. Tonight was great, but atmosphere on Sunday will be as well. The totality of the third quarter, you guys had an 18-0 run at one point. You outscored them by 11 for the quarter. They have the best record in the NBA. Did you guys as a group uh, in some ways reach a level that you haven't maybe gotten to yet this year? 
I don't know. That's for you guys to talk about. That's for you guys to talk about. Um, our coaching staff put a great game plan together. We just try to execute that. Try to not make no mistakes. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes in Milwaukee when we played them last time. And when you're playing against a great team, they will make you pay if you make mistakes. So um, we try to love, uh, lower the mistakes. You're going to make some throughout the course of a game because it's a 48-minute game and you're playing against a great team. But if you can just lower the level of mistakes, then you get yourself to put yourself in position to win a ball game. And we did that. LeBron, you guys, with the victory today, clinched the playoff spot here, snapped that six-year scoreless streak. Does that check a box for you, especially after the season went last year? For you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I came here to put this team and put this franchise back where they needed to be. Um, the league is not what it is if the Lakers are not winning. And uh, that was one of my responsibilities and one of my goals when I came here. And then last year, when they would fulfill that, hurt, hurt me to my heart to go down December 25th with the, with the growing injury that I had. Um, knock on wood. Um, but, you know, I said uh, congratulations to Kuz and AC uh, for their first time they'll be in the postseason. Um, and it's just uh, anytime you throughout the course of a season when you have little milestones, you're able to acknowledge that and uh, it's a good step in the direction for the franchise. So. Last two questions, on, please. The last couple of weeks, you guys have been able to get wins back against you know, really good opponents that have beaten you, Boston, Philly, uh, tonight, obviously. Um, how does the fact that you guys are sitting at 0-2 against the Clippers sit with you guys? Um, I mean, we have an opportunity to get better on Sunday because we know how well they've been playing as of late. They, they're in full strength. Uh, we're in full strength. And uh, we look forward to the challenge to see um, how we can uh, you know, match up with them again. Uh, so, uh, you know, the first game, we kind of threw that game out the window. It's the first game of the season. Who were we? Uh, who were they? Um, they had way more returning guys than we did. We were still trying to figure out ourselves. And then uh, the Christmas Day game, uh, we didn't play to our capabilities. We played great in the first half. In the second half, we let it kind of like get away from us. So uh, we just look forward to see how, um, if we can continue to play good basketball, uh, no matter when, we'll just draw. Well, Brian, apparently the possibility has arisen of playing game playing NBA games without fans in the arena just to be safe because of coronavirus. Have you thought about what that might be like? Who? Or, hmm? Who? Who what? Who what? We play games without the fans? Yeah. Like no, you. it's impossible. I ain't playing. <laughs> <laughs> if I ain't got the fans in the crowd. That's who I play for. I play for my teammates. Play for, I play for the fans. That's what it's all about. So if I show up to an arena and ain't no fans in there, I ain't playing. So they can do what they want to do. Thanks, right. everyone. Thanks Appreciate everyone. it. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.